Welcome, welcome to the Delangus Cast. I'm your host, my name is Graham. And I am a human being that lives on this here planet that we call Earth. And, uh... I'm just another fucking jackass who decided to have a podcast because there's already a bajillion of them out there and I figured let's not let's let's not have a bajillion of them let's ha- let's have mm, bajillion and one maybe I'll have to start another podcast we could have a bajillion and one and a half you know just never really finish that one cuz I find that sometimes I'm not always good at following through on things in my life sometimes uh Sometimes I'm really good at starting things, but I'm not always so great at following through on them. And that's been something I've been working on. Um, but anyway, I am a, currently, as recording this, of course, uh, currently I am a 36-year-old adult human being living on Earth. And uh, 36 years old, um, I've had a weird life. Uh, it all kind of started when I was about 10 years old and I got hit by a car. That was a hell of an experience. Uh, I was riding my bike home one day and a lady in a minivan, uh, she she hit me with her minivan. I remember seeing the minivan come at me. This is a strange thing. I saw the minivan come at me and then I literally remember just blank space. My brain blacked it out. And then I remember standing up in the middle of the road my face hurts from scraping the pavement. My arm and my leg hurt from scraping the pavement. My bike is all fucked up and mangled, and I'm annoyed that my bike is broken. Now i got to walk it the rest of the way home, even though it was only a block to go at that point. So I stand up and do what I thought the reasonable thing to do was. I, I stand up. My teeth are broken. My face is bloody. I didn't really comprehend exactly what went on. And I stand up, I pick up my bent-to-shit bike, and I start walking home until a nurse who was on her way home from work said, Oh my God, please sit down. You are probably in shock. So she, of course you're concerned when you see a kid get hit by a car, but she was particularly concerned because I went headfirst into the windshield, rolled up over top of the van, and then flopped over to the side. I don't remember any of that part. I just remember standing up, and as I picked my bike up, my teeth are broken, my face is bleeding. I'm like, fuck this. And then then I look up, and I see the smashed windshield where my head fit. Luckily, I had a helmet on that day. I didn't always wear my helmet, but I had it on that day, and I've worn it ever since. Motorcycle, bicycle, I don't give a fuck. Sometimes I'll wear a helmet walking down the street if it's sketchy. I don't fucking care. Full face motorcycle helmet. Just going for a stroll, right? That's what I do. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> always, always, always wear a helmet. Keep that brain intact. Strap on your brain bucket and do what you want. But anyway, I remember one of the funny things that I remember specifically from that day. Seeing the smashed windshield and the woman with her two hands on her cheeks just going, Whoa! She looked like Macaulay Culkin in Home Alone where he slaps the uh, aftershave on his face, but it burns. And he's just like, ah! That's what was going on. That's what, it, that's what it looked like. But she was an old German lady. I remember she was a German lady because uh, I found out later from my mom, who was there, because um, one of the neighborhood kids saw this happen, so they ran home and got my mom. Next thing I know, the whole neighborhood's there, and everybody's, I'm laying on the grass, and the paramedics are checking me out, and they're strapping me down onto the backboard thing, and lifting me up onto the gurney, and everybody's sitting there. Meanwhile, I'm just kind of stoked I got to go for an ambulance ride. Never been in an ambulance before. I was 10 years old. It was kind of cool, except for the fact that they had my head strapped in one spot, and I was strapped to this big wooden piece of board. In case I had spinal injuries, which I didn't. Turned out all I came out with it was was just the scrapes and scratches, bruises, whatever. And the broken teeth that I had to get fixed. And that was it. I was fucking lucky. Went to school after that. I looked like Two-Face because I just had scabs on half of my face. Two-Face from Batman. And, uh... 
So it was kind of obvious who I was, and all these kids would come up to me like, were you the kid that got hit by a car? Like, I was this weird fucking celebrity in school because I got hit by a fucking car. <laughs> it's it so weird. It was so fucking weird. But anyway, my mom managed to stay very calm during the whole thing, even though she said she didn't feel calm. She said everybody kept complimenting her on how she was keeping calm the way she was. But she said inside she wasn't. She said, uh, and she also said that the police were having a hard time with her, with the woman who hit me. Um, they were having a hard time explaining, like trying to get a statement out of her because she kept freaking out and she kept going in and out of German. She was, she was speaking Germanlish. English German? I don't know. Whatever. She was going in and out of English and German and I guess she didn't even realize it because she was freaked the fuck out. She worked in a grocery store in the neighborhood too and a bunch of my fucking stupid ass friends or even just kids that were, that knew me at all would go in there and tell her that she, uh, that she hit Graham with a car and all this shit. I guess sometimes she, I felt bad for her. She didn't do it on purpose. She just didn't see me. The sun was in her eyes. That's all it was. And she didn't, she was driving a little too fast and she didn't see me in the sun with the glare of the sun in her eyes. But I guess she felt like shit because of it. Well, I'd feel like shit too if I hit a fucking kid with my car. I hit a dog with a car once and the dog was fine and I felt fucking awful about it. But anyway, kids would go in there and be like, that's the lady that hit Graham with her car. And then I guess sometimes it, she just, she couldn't finish her shift. <laughs> she, she'd start crying and she'd have to go home and stuff. I've, I, I really do. I, I've, I've, I still feel bad for her because of that, but uh, it is what it is, I guess. Kids are fucking assholes. Not so much kids are always assholes, but kids just, uh, kids just, uh, they just, ju they just say what they're thinking. And I think adults need to do more of that. But anyway. So, I've had a bit of a strange life. I feel like the getting hit by the car was the beginning of that. Um, fast forward many years later. I get through high school deal with a lot of assholery in that. I learned how to I learned how to deal with assholes at a young age. I learned how to deal with them in a way that confuses them, in a way that messes with them, in a way that they can't get mad at me because they don't know what to think. I learned that at a young age. It's a valuable skill to have, actually. I'm I'm grateful for it. I really am. And uh But yeah, get through high school, get through college, nothing Nothing really too noteworthy in college. I dated the same girl all the way through, basically. Turned out uh, there was some things going on with that relationship that weren't good. So, ended up cutting that off. It was hard and it was difficult. I loved her. I fell in love with that girl, but... She needed, she needed some help. And then I dated a lot more other women that needed help in similar ways, but they got progressively worse. Um, until the, the, the ultimate one, where uh, she had a bit of an alcohol and a bit of a cocaine problem. And uh, that was no bueno. So I cut that off with her. Moved in with a couple of friends. Um... One of my roommates then ended up having a very bad bipolar episode. That was difficult to live with. Got through that. Moved on. Had fucking brain surgery. I had a tumor. Had a tumor removed from my brain stem, which is a very long, crazy, bizarre story that uh, I, did, I will get into that later. I will do a series of episodes telling that whole story, so... If nothing else, stay tuned for the brain surgery episodes because uh, there's a lot of weird shit that goes on when you go through something like that. There's a lot of weird physical shit and there's a lot of weird mental shit. The mental shit is still getting to me. It's been 10 years and it's getting to me. Or not 10 years, it's been 3 years and it's still it's still there. The I'm still working through the mental shit. It's a, it's a weird thing. It's a weird thing being told that you only have a certain amount of time to live... 
And it's a weird thing that they're saying the only way to save you is I have a couple of dudes pry your head open and take this tumor out because otherwise it's just going to slowly grow into your brain stem, progressively causing worse and worse nerve damage and whatnot up until the point that it just does you in. And then basically you wind up dying a slow, agonizing death. And I remember the doctor, and I said, yeah, we're doing the surgery. And the doctor said, you can think about it. Doctor said I could think about it. And uh, I was just like, what is it to think about? It's either I die an agonizing, slow, agonizing death, have a few years left to live and not have them be good years, or I can have this surgery with a high survival rate and live quality, many quality years. So I'm like, this is the easiest difficult decision I've made in my entire life. Yeah, get into my head. Fucking dig that thing out of my goddamn head for shit's sake. <laughs> So there was that. Three years passed with that and I'm grateful to be alive. I'm very happy to still be here. That whole experience of the brain surgery just kind of motivated me to do what I want. I, I was in the hospital bed. I couldn't walk because of the way they had to go into my head, ripped apart my inner ear. So I had to go to physical therapy and such to be able to walk decent again. I, uh, I was sitting there, couldn't get out of bed without a nurse helping me to the bathroom even. It was a beautiful day. I hadn't been outside for who knows how long. I was having problems sleeping in the hospital. I was on five days of basically no sleep. I was losing my goddamn mind. And then I just reminded myself that I am still here, and once I get out of that hospital bed, there's no reason that I can't do the things that I want to do with my life. I can't pursue a happy life. There's no reason I can't pursue a happy life as long as I'm not realistic about it. And taking that attitude, like I made that promise to myself that I was going to live a fulfilling life because I still had it. And... And I was doing it. I was figuring it out. I dove deep into my music. I dove deep into stand-up comedy world. All of a sudden it felt like I'm doing the things that I feel like I was meant to do. It wasn't even the things that I liked to do anymore. It was the things I was fucking meant to do. And for the first time in my adult life, I remember being truly happy about it. And then the fucking pandemic hits. Right exactly at three years. So the fucked up thing about that being three years is my whole life got flipped upside down in a very short amount of time. It's been a year and I'm still not adjusted. My life is completely different now than it was before the pandemic. It, it's hard. It's hard not doing the things that you feel like you're meant to do. It's fucking depressing been dealing with a lot of fucking depression over all this shit and and then if I'm not depressed I'm manic and I, I don't tend to always be somewhere in, be, in between and that's not good mental health is not talked about nearly enough in this country it's not talked about nearly enough in this pandemic situation talk about physical health but mental health is just as important if not more so eh, I'd say they're even they're, they're, they're just as important and if you lose your physical health in one way or another, and, you, and if you don't have your mental health, you can't, you can't do that. That's not good. Like, if you lose your physical and mental health, then what do you have? You don't have any health at all. And without your health, what, you know, what, what do you have? So... pandemic was a weird time because I knew 2020 was going to be a weird year. It's a very specific emotion that comes out when you are given a certain amount of time to live and then you start to live past it. 
It's a specific emotion that, as far as I know, has no name in the English language. Which makes it difficult to explain or even talk about at all. But yeah, it's a strange thing. It's a hell of a feeling. And everyone I know that's experienced a similar thing, they don't know how to explain it either. They just go, yeah, it's real. I feel it too. And they know what you're talking about when you bring it up. I don't know. Life's a trip. It's one weird trip. I, I'm starting to suspect that life is a trip. Like, seriously, when we die, we'll go into this other existence and just be like, holy shit, 20 minutes passed, and I lived this entire lifetime as a human. Starting to think that's, uh, that's probably what's going on here in this crazy world, but I don't know. I don't know shit, though. So don't fucking listen to me. Who the fuck am I? I'm just some dude on the internet. I'm some jerk-off with a podcast, just like everyone else. But I felt the need to do this podcast. And it helps me. And if it helps me talking through my shit, or if my talking through my own shit helps somebody else, and it can only be one per and if it's only one person, if I help one person that stumbles across this podcast long after I die, then it's worth it as far as I'm concerned. It made me feel better and it helped someone. So anyway. Here's the introduction to this thing called the Delangus Cast. I call it Delangus Cast because uh, Delangus has been a thing in my life. Uh, I originally thought it was a word I made up. And uh, I started making stickers and t-shirts and all my skater friends were super stoked about them all. And started buying them up when I, whenever I printed them. So that was just the thing I did as a, as a graphic designer. It was just a fun little project that I could make a little money off on the side. It, it was a pretty good deal. And uh, I thought it was a word I made up, and then uh, later found out that it was a Polish word from some very rare dialect that's spoken, only ever spoken in some small section of the mountains anymore. And as far as I know, the actual Polish pronunciation for it is the long goose, but I'm not sure. It's in a weird dialect of Polish. And, uh, some weird old dialect. And, uh, basically what it is, it's a word that means lazy. It's pretty much what it is. It pretty much means lazy. And when I found that out, I thought that was hilarious. Because if I put the time into doing anything, it's anything but lazy. If I do something, I'm going to do it right. So, here I am doing this fucking podcast, eh? I'm calling it the Delangus Cast. So, I'm going to end this first episode here. And uh, just to remind you, all of you, all of you, all, you all. All of all you all alls <laughs> that's stupid. But anyway, I just want to remind anybody out there listening to this that your mental health is just as important as your physical health. And you gotta keep yourself well. Cause if you can't keep yourself well, you can't help yourself. And if you can't help yourself, you can't help anybody else. And and we need each other in these times. We need each other in any time. So anyway, stay well out there. Until next time, good luck and Godspeed.